In this series we'll build each kit from the Fantasy Village set by Battle Systems, discussing any construction pitfalls and build mistakes as well as kit specific build tips and possible conversions. Once everything is built we'll test a variety of methods to colour the edges of the terrain and then finally conclude with an in-depth overall review video of the whole Fantasy terrain set. Follow along and consider subscribing if that sounds like something you don't want to miss. If you haven't already, I recommend watching my introductory video to this series where I cover a few really key tips that will be relevant to this build and the others. So in this video we're going to have a look at the fencing, stone walls and some of the graveyard components. So the graveyard I don't think comes in the normal retail village set but I got this one with the Kickstarter and it looks like it's going to be very similar basically railings, fences, walls, I'm imagining they're going to go together in quite the same kind of way where you've got uh, the wall and then some sort of support for them to stand up on. But this should be quite a quick video. We will build some of these additional greystone pieces as well and any other little bits and bobs that come with this. Um, so I'm just going to go through really, build them up. You'll probably see a lot of this sped up and I'll really just point out if there's any particular issues that you need to be aware of because I think these are actually going to be quite straightforward to, to uh, put together. Okay, well, let's start with graveyard. Okay, so quite a lot to pop out on those. Um, only issue, I don't know, a couple of them, actually, yeah, a few of those on the back sides as you're popping them through. The artwork's skagging on these top points. So getting a little bit of tear in there. So I think what I'm going to do is just pop a quick little bit of super glue on those. So a couple of things to be aware of, potentially you can damage the backside as you're pushing those through. So if you want to be extra careful, I guess you could cut with a scalpel some of those tabs. Uh, I don't think it's worth it, to be honest. I think it's better to just repair them a little bit afterwards if you need to. And then as I was doing it, just being really careful not to bend these spikes. That's, that's straightforward, so we'll put those together. Okay, uh, not much to say about those. Re really straightforward. They went together nice and easy. Uh, they stand up nicely. So let's have a quick look at the rest of the set here. So we've got, these are quite well marked actually. So you've got, you know which bits go with which. So I'm gonna build up two sarcophagus. And then I think we will build up the rest of the like gravestones that I'm guessing go in these gravel bases. So let's take out Sarcophagus 1 first. I haven't watched the video on this, but it looks quite straightforward. So the headstone is going to go in there. Then it looks like you're going to have a... Oh, that's weird. Ah, uh, right, okay. I'm trying to work out why there's a spare piece. I'm guessing it's so that you can have maybe an excavated one with the lid off. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I prefer it like this, so I won't put that on just for now, though. Let's build up the other one. Okay, so I have to quickly check the uh, battle systems guide to work out kind of what these pieces were meant to do. And they're really basically just decorative, so on this one, see the tooling's not very straight on there, it's cut a bit too close to the side, but you can basically stick that on top of there, glue it on, adds a 3D depth to it. Same with this. So I was wondering if it was meant to be maybe like a lid that you could pull off and it would clip inside, but it doesn't work like that. It's really just a case of glue that on top of there, and if you wanted you could glue that on top, although actually I like the artwork on that better, so I will just glue these on. and I'm
Okay, yeah, so that, that super glue works, works fine on those. Slightly less forgiving than the PVA. I'll put that on, it's a little bit wonky, but oh, as is that one. Okay, so super glue skill fail there. Maybe uh, the PVA's right for me because it's a bit more forgiving, but that's fine. They're all graves. Let's have a look at the gravestones. That's a bit of broken headstone on there, so I'm going to glue that down. I'm actually just going to go through and just dab a little bit of super glue on each of those because I'm, I'm not going to be taking these apart. Uh, while those are drying, I've just realised there's these extra plinths which go on the top of the the gate pieces, so I'm going to put those on. Oh, I like that, that makes a nice little scene. Maybe it wouldn't be quite like that, because that's a gate there. You wouldn't be opening a gate and walking all over those graves, but maybe uh, maybe it would be more like this. Yeah, I mean, that's just the one sprue off the of the graveyard set, because I got it free with the Kickstarter, so I think if you bought the whole graveyard, you'd get a, um, probably some more fencing and the mausoleum type thing. But yeah, I like that. It's good. I'll definitely be using this on my battlefield. Quick look at the wooden fencing. I think it's going to be very similar to those... Um, gates from the graveyard. A few bits of scatter to add to my scatter terrain baggie. Okay, they came out pretty well, just one or two little issues on, on the reverse sides, which I can just super glue. And like I said in previous videos, I'm, I'm being quite careful with these, so I'm not being really awful as I'm popping these out. I'm maybe not being as careful as you could be, but when you think about these sets and you think about how many bits you've got to pop out, if you did literally go around with a scalpel on every single one, you would be here for days and days and days, uh, you know, weeks probably. So. You know, you might be watching this and thinking, oh, he's uh, damaging these quite a lot. But I can tell you, I am being reasonably careful. You know, by all means, you, you could be more careful if you don't mind spending ages on it. But if you don't mind spending ages on it, then I question why you'd be buying a set like this and maybe not scratch building, for example. You know, if you really don't mind spending that long on making the terrain. So, so that's just a general comment there on the, the, the risk of damaging the pieces, depending on how fast you're popping them out the sprue. OK, let's put these together really straightforward. They just clip in like this. And yeah, just while I'm doing this, I'll mention that these look really simple and really straightforward, but it was one of the selling points when I saw the Kickstarter. Something like that, and it looks really straightforward, like I said, which it is. It's actually quite hard to make something like that really super quickly in terms of all these intricate little details. You know, you can use coffee stirrers and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can make them, and overall, if you spend ages on it, it probably would look a bit better. But just some of these scattered around the table, to make all the difference, um, you know, when, when you're playing a game, you know, helps with the immersion. So yeah, let's get these built up and see what they look like as a set. So yeah, there we have it. I, I think these look great. I, th I think if you're playing something like um, Middle Earth Strategy Battle or sort of Frostgrave and you're not wanting a particularly snow-covered village, you don't mind it being uh, 
you know, like an, a normal village that you're fighting in, Mordheim, or any of these sort of small skirmish type games. There's quite a lot on here that you can add for sort of like terrain that people have got to jump over, maybe some missions where you've got to corral some animals. I imagine there's probably something along those lines that you could use these for in, uh, in you know, if you're playing as hobbits, anything like that really. And I think you can really quite easily combine this next to the graveyard. I, I think it's going to look really good. I think that'll be great as well for sort of larger scale games where you maybe don't want huge line of sight blockers. Maybe not all the houses, maybe just a couple of the houses. And then some of these strategic places on the table so you've got to, you know, be conscious of when you're moving your units around. Maybe they count as... Um, Sort of difficult terrain or dangerous terrain depending on the game system you're playing but yeah they sound up well not much more to say about those i you know i like them okay so we're going to finish off by looking at the stone walls which they're going to be pretty much the same as the fences so we'll pop them out there and just note if there's any issues one thing i would mention with these fences is it does take a while to pop out all the insides so let's see if it's the same with the stone walls Just a quick note on all these spare stone scattered terrain pieces that you get. First, I think it's great that they put them on the sheets because there's space, why not? I watched the instructional videos and they keep mentioning about keeping these to one side, which obviously I will do. I wasn't sure really how useful they'd end up being. One thing that struck me is um, when I was building the ruined village and you put sort of extra bits of scattered terrain glued down on it, it really adds a bit more 3D nature to the models. And I'm thinking that these will actually be good along the riverbanks, just, you know, dot them along just to add some raised areas. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely keeping these and I'll be using them for that, I think. Uh, so as you can see, some of these pieces have got holes poked out the walls. Um, yeah, they're not that easy to see. So yeah, make sure you poke those out because that, that's going to look really cool. And Straight away, I'm noticing this is a gate, uh, which is great, but I think also that's going to work really well to transition from a wall to fences. So I like that. I don't know if it was intended like that, but that's the kind of thing I really like. So let's put these together and I'm sure they're going to go together nice and easy with nothing to write home about. Um, let's worry some of these in terms of scagging the artwork because there's not so much um, negative space um, you know, inside them as there are with the fences. So don't have to be quite as careful with these. Okay, there we have it. Really easy to put together. I really like these. The immediate thing that's jumping out at me reminds me of some games we've played of Frostgrave where you want, you know, some some bits of terrain that are, um, provide more cover than others. So, you know, straight away you could say, you know, light cover on the fences, hard cover on the walls, you know, usual sort of thing. But um, it, you get that feel from it when you're looking at the terrain. And I'm also noticing that these are going to um, work well transitioning from the graveyard pieces. So I've only got one set of these graveyard pieces but the patterning is very similar so you know there's no reason why you can't have a graveyard that's been extended with a normal wall for example yeah that's going to work well that's that's no problem and then like i mentioned also the gate you know you pop, pop the gate on there and then maybe that transitions into some fencing just gives you way more to work with so i know you don't get the graveyard pieces with the village set so let's just look at Taking the graveyard pieces out, and we'll look at all the fencing. It's like line it all up. You know, if you're playing on a uh, like a two by two or a three by three gaming mat, there's a lot of fencing here just on those two sheets, just walls and fences. You know, you can see there, there's a, there's a lot there. Even if you're playing on a larger scale, like a six by four table with full armies, where you don't want quite so much terrain, there's more than enough here to make a few little pastures, maybe uh, a few bits of wall next to the buildings. In fact, let's have a quick look at that while well, I've got the ruined building set out here. Maybe you've got your your ruined building. There's a bit of ruined wall, so there was a wall next to there. There's another bit of broken wall. Maybe that was the gate to your, your ruined cottage. Bit of broken fence in next to it. And you can see straight away from a kind of modularity point of view, you know, these these fit together really nice. I like those. Nothing, nothing complex. Nothing, nothing particularly to watch out for, except for 
the artwork being a bit delicate when you're popping out the inside of these thinner structures here. Let's get rid of that because that's not part of this set. Yeah, let me know what you think about that. What I am thinking is, is maybe I want to buy a whole graveyard set now so I get the mausoleum and maybe build a big graveyard. That'd be brilliant for some of the games. Again, like I'm thinking of Frostgrave, some of the missions like uh, like the mausoleum mission, that'll work really well. Okay, yeah, well, let me know what you think. If you've got a different experience of popping all these out or maybe had some complete disasters or if you've got any other suggestions about how these can be combined, I'd actually quite like to hear that. Let's have a look what the graveyard, fences and walls look like on the tabletop amongst some of the rest of the terrain. If you've got any build tips, add them to the comments, you know, other people hopefully will find that really interesting and useful. In the final video, we're going to have a look at a few pieces of scattered terrain that we haven't covered to date.